So we've already won a Stanley Cup with the worst team in the WHL, and now it's time to move on to the OHL, and that's going to be the Niagara Ice Dogs. However, for the sake of this video, they're actually not going to be called the Niagara Ice Dogs. So when I set the location for the created team, I can't set it to Niagara, so I'm going to have to set it to Niagara Falls. So meet the Niagara Falls Ice Dogs. Basically, it's the exact same team. Obviously, this team's not going to be winning any games this season. Maybe they're going to be able to get one, but it's clear that this is going to be a terrible team. And I mean, to be fair, we are throwing an OHL team in the NHL, so if this team even wins one game, that would be a massive surprise. But we're going to be rocking this team this season. And of course, we're allowed to make three free agent signings and then as many trades as we want. So I've done enough yapping here. Let's go ahead, simulate through the entire season here. And you know what? Let's simulate the entire postseason while we're at it. Because I know for a fact this team's not making the playoffs. Before we go ahead and simulate this season, normally I would talk about how I'm trying to pass the Detroit Red Wings and YouTube subscribers. And that's still true. But I also want to hit 52,000 subs by the end of the year. We don't have too many days left to do it so if you haven't already subscribe to the channel now i'm not gonna lie there were some impressive things that happened this season obviously we're finishing dead last in the entire league here but two wins is pretty solid i think what also makes it worse is we were 0 63 up until the trade deadline how did we win two games after the trade deadline that makes no sense we also lost four games in overtime so the fact that we made it to overtime in four games is wild and of course we have to look at all these legends on the team right here and zachary lavoy he's gonna be leading the way 16 goals eight assists for 24 points and he was minus 122 in the process meanwhile these goaltending numbers we're just gonna pretend they don't exist but an 895 considering you're facing about 70 shots a game isn't too bad now some teams celebrate winning stanley cups like the dallas stars here but you know what we're celebrating something different and that's gonna be the first overall pick because we won two games if we don't get the first overall pick then something went really wrong we better not drop any lower than two how did we drop the three how is that even possible we won two games so the easy selection here would be going with sam dickinson we already know what he's like a medium elite potential player i've had him on my team in a couple videos but i've also had lindstrom one or two times and this man is built different as long as he develops he's going to be a 60 goal scorer for us i mean 60 goals is a bit of a stretch but he's that guy on top of picking up lindstrom we're also going to be getting a fantastic prospect in the fourth round we're picking up bass some low elite potential two-way forward and it looks like that last two-way forward is not going to be the only one we're picking up because with the 133rd overall pick another lowly potential two-way forward now here's the fun part re-signing the entire niagara ice dogs team because we have to bring everyone back so as we know i'm allowed to make three signings in free agency but none of the players can be over an 85 overall so our first signing is going to be jake debrus to a three-year deal at 4.3 million dollars and the reason i'm giving him more money than what he's asking for we won two games last season there's not a single soul that wants to come and play for this team the next player we're going to be signing is going to be guryanov to a two-year extension at five million dollars similar to jake debrus we have to give him way more than what he's asking for and to finish it all off we might as well make one final move to the forward core blake wheeler one year at five million dollars we'll trade you at the trade deadline for 50% retained and then we'll pick up a few more pieces so we're moving into year number two and obviously this team's taking steps in the right direction Blake Wheeler, Lindstrom and Gurionov they're gonna be holding it down the first line and then on the second line of course we're gonna have Jake DeBrus leading the way here but we also have Ryan Rubrock so what's really interesting about him is he was already on the Niagara Ice Dogs and he's got medium elite potential comparing this to the Edmonton Oil Kings when we rebuilt them I think their highest potential player only had like top six or something now we have a medium elite potential player and he's developing pretty quick a 74 overall at 16 years old he's gonna be a nice piece for the future meanwhile the defense is looking the exact same that's absolutely cooked while the gold tending that's cooked as well we're gonna only be winning about five games this season but ideally we get the first overall pick and don't get screwed again so what can i say i'm really impressed with the ice dogs right now six wins we have six wins at the trade deadline, 6, 51, and 5, 17 points. That's about 15 more points than I was expecting us to have. And it looks like these guys have been a massive help to the team. Blake Wheeler's got 66 points so far. He's actually over a point a game. He's going to have a lot of trade value here. Guryana, 58 points. Jake Debrus, 44. And the rest of the guys here can't really complain too much about. So with that being said, let's make some trades here. And Blake Wheeler, you're the first guy I'm going to be shipping out at 50% retain. But I'm not going to lie. Guryana, if you're having an incredible year so far, you actually a pretty high trade value if i traded you at 50 percent retained with two years left on your contract what could we get for you because we might be able to secure a medium elite potential player so hear me out with this deal here guriana 50 percent retained a third and fourth rounder over to the dallas stars we're gonna get logan stan coven he's a 75 overall medium elite potential he's only 22 years old and we're also taking on the base and marchman contract for two reasons one we basically need to take this on in order to get the deal to work but two he actually has negative trade value because they don't want to pay him the money so is it possible for us 
just get this deal done right here? It looks like it will be. What if I take out the fourth round? If we just do a third, it looks like we're going to have to include that fourth. And personally, I'm perfectly fine with including that fourth rounder. Let's bring Logan Stankoven onto the team. So I think this is going to be the deal right here. Blake Wheeler in a fourth round pick. Now, I don't necessarily want to give up a ton of draft capital, but I mean, we're getting two good young players here. Pakols, and he's got top six potential. He's a good young player. And so is Atu Ratu. Can we get this deal done right here? They're going to be saying no. You know what? Screw it. Let's throw in some more draft picks. Or do we just give up our third rounder for this season? That could be the move as well. Make it simple. I'll offer that over. They're saying no, but you know what they want. They want that lucrative seventh round pick. So I'll add that to the deal for 2026. And there we go. We got this deal done. Also, Ty Smith just got placed on waivers. And you know what? We might as well claim him because he'd be our best defenseman. So our team definitely saw a ton of improvement this season, but don't get it twisted. We're still terrible. 8, 56, and 8, but we did finish with 24 points. So I'll definitely take that type of success in season number two. Now, Jake DeBrusque, he's going to be leading the way for us. That should be no surprise. 61 points. Lidstrom's picking up 46 here. And Rubrock, another great year from him. He's picking up 43. Now, Mason Marchman, what'd you do since joining the team? I'm not expecting you to do too much. 11 points in 20 games. You might actually have a bit of trade value now. You never know. Also, Atu Ratu is him. 14 points in 20 games. This guy actually might develop into something and be an elite player for us. Who knows? And Pakolzin, we're not really going to talk about what happened with him. 11 points in 20 games. I was expecting more, not gonna lie. So when the postseason came to an end, we're gonna see the Colorado Avalanche taking home the Stanley Cup over the Florida Panthers. I would say we're two seasons of tanking away from making the postseason, and then probably three seasons away for really competing for Stanley Cups. So with that being said, let's get the first overall pick. Now, I refuse to believe that we're going to be dropping from one to three in back-to-back -back drafts here. And that logic seems to be holding up as we're dropping from one to two. One to two is definitely different from one to three. Also, I guarantee the guy going first overall here has franchise potential. It would only be fitting. So here we go. We're entering the draft. I'm going to simulate the first pick. What are the odds that the first overall pick has franchise potential? Surprisingly, they actually don't. But an 82 overall playmaker definitely would have been nice. With our second overall pick, I'm going to be selecting Ashham. He has medium lead potential. We already knew that. But he's an 82 overall playmaker. So the fact that we got an 82 overall after an 82 overall was selected first overall, I would say that's a win. Outside of Ashham, it was a pretty mid-draft for us. But you know what? Hey, I can't complain with what we got. We're walking away with an 82 overall player. So I think it's time to start giving out extensions here. And add to Ratu, I see the potential with you. So we're doing eight years at 1.4 million. There's no way this contract ages poorly for us whatsoever. Ty Smith, on the other hand, you're not really that guy, but I mean, you can't really make our team worse. So I'll give you three years at about 900K. You're also on a two-way contract, so that's also nice. Now, before we get into next season, we do have one extension to give out. But Colson, I'll give you five years at 1.7 million. I feel like that's a pretty fair deal for you. I actually lied. There's more than one deal we have to give out. We have to give out two. And Stankoven, I'll do six years at probably like 3.8 million. I think you're going to develop into a great player for us so over the next six years. I think that's a fair price for you. So there you go. 3.8 million for the next six seasons. So we are going to need one real good defenseman for the future here. And I feel like Neil Pion could definitely be that guy for us. So we're going to do 5.7 for the next four years. On top of picking up Pyong, we're also going to be picking up Gavrikov to help the defense here. We'll do three years at 3.4 million. I feel like that's a reasonable contract for him. And I think this final signing is going to be an absolute steal for us if we're able to get it done. Mason Appleton, 2.4 for the next four seasons. So I actually think there's a pretty good chance that we do worse than we did last season, strictly off of line chemistry here. We had to bring in a new coach because our last coach said, no, I'm not coming back to this team. And our new coach has zero line fit whatsoever with like half of this team. There's very few players that have good line fits. I mean, Stan Coven, he's got a great one. Jake DeBrus does. But yeah, the rest of this team terrible line fits defensively we're definitely getting upgrades here we brought in Gavrikov we brought in Neil Pyong but it's definitely not enough for us to get into the postseason let alone be a 20 win team and then the goaltending we're rocking the exact same tandem as last season but that's going to be changing at the trade deadline because somebody's getting shipped out so I'm going to be completely honest I'm incredibly impressed with this Ice Dogs team right now 20 42 and 3 at the trade deadline way better than I was expecting I didn't even think we would have 20 wins at the end of the season let alone the trade deadline we're also only seven points back of the New York Islanders. We don't have two defensive pairings or a fourth line, and y'all only have two more wins than us. You should be ashamed of yourselves. So Ashham is him? Like literally him. He's an 87 overall at 18 years old. He's already got 34 goals on the year. 
I was not expecting that. I really wasn't. Now, I didn't expect Mason Marchman would be helping us this much because he's going to be packaged up along with a third rounder and a lucrative seventh round pick over to the Calgary Flames. We're going to be picking up our goaltender for the future. That's going to be Dustin Wolf, an 84 overall. Of course, he's got medium elite potential and he's only 24 years old, so he's got a few more years to develop. So this is going to be a fantastic pickup for us. Now, Jake DeBrusque, you might be one of our best players, but I think I'm going to trade you because you hold a lot of value right now. And I'm going to be sending you over to the Philadelphia Flyers. We're going to be picking up Owen Tippett to be your replacement. He's an 84 overall he can fill that role but we're also going to be trying to pick up cam york here 25 years old he's an 84 overall as well he'd be a nice upgrade to our defense considering we have basically nothing i'm assuming that you're not going to be enough and we're going to have to add more to this deal but what if i retain 50 percent of your contract because that could be the difference maker over the next two years we have so much cap space to work with I'm okay with retaining a bit of money. So a 50% retain, is Jake DeBrus going to be enough? It doesn't look like it. But you know what might be enough? A lucrative 6th round pick. Because you know 6th and 7th round picks, they hold tons of value, and we're getting this deal done. Then right after acquiring Owen Tippett, it's time to give him his extension. We're giving him 5 years at 4.5 million. Now with Dustin Wolf, it's not going to be a long-term extension with him, but we're going to start with two years at $1.2 million. That's not a bad contract. We'll see what he develops into, and if he doesn't develop, then we'll just trade him away. So once again, the Niagara Ice Dogs are finishing dead last in the entire league, but that shouldn't really be a surprise. 27-50-5 here, only two wins back in the New York Islanders, and we scored more goals than the New York Islanders. We were almost averaging three goals per game. We were actually scoring more goals than a handful of teams here. Definitely not a good sign for them. Goaltending-wise, obviously, we absolutely suck because we don't have a defense but we did bring in dustin wolf and i think he could be a difference maker well i hope he's the difference maker there's a reason i brought him in okay ashham you're way better than i thought you would be 77 points in your rookie year and you also picked up 45 goals as a playmaker bro's a playmaker and just picked up 45 goals he's going to be a 90 overall heading into next season he's probably going to get franchise potential or something no nah, this man is him also neil Pyong, 61 points can't complain about that and you're up to an 87 overall that was a great pickup for us meanwhile dustin Wolf, I'm curious to see what your numbers look like since coming over. A 6 and 7 record, 2 OT losses, a 904 and a 329. How are your numbers better here than they were in Calgary? Like, how does that even make sense? But you know what? We're not going to question it. We're going to get ready for next season. We actually might make the playoffs sooner than I was expecting. And of course, we already know that we're dead last in the entire league, so we're not making the postseason here. But the Buffalo Sabres are, and they're going to go on to sweep the LA Kings in the Stanley Cup final. But you know what? We don't care about this. We have a chance at the first overall pick. We've dropped from 1 to 3. We've dropped from 1 to 2. Now it's time we get the first overall pick. So here we go. Simulating to the draft lottery results, we're getting the first overall pick. Now I wasn't expecting that to happen. Like I fully believe we were going to drop from 1 to 3 again. But hey, we got the first overall pick. Let's go ahead and draft a franchise potential player and we'll build the dynasty here. Now we actually have a tough decision to make here. We could go with Adam, who's the certified number one overall pick, and he's a sniper. The only issue is we have a handful of snipers on the team already. You know what we could use though? Another defenseman. And this guy's a defensive defenseman. I think he could be the guy for us. Now the question is, what if I trade from one to three? How many assets could I get for that? Are the New York Islanders willing to trade the third overall pick for the first? And then how much value does the first overall pick have here? It's got quite a bit. Hear me out. I have a plan. So I'm probably not going to make a trade with the Islanders unless I can get next season's first rounder in the deal. So if I can get two first rounders for our first overall, then I'll make this deal. Okay. Okay, I'm actually okay with that. I did not think they were going to accept that. So we're dropping from one to three here. And honestly, I'm perfectly okay with that. Because by doing that, we're going to be securing this defenseman right here. He has elite potential. He's a gem. Defensive defenseman. That's exactly what we need on this team. We need somebody to play a bit of defense here. And he's only one overall lower than the guy that went first overall. It's kind of ironic how I was making such a big deal about us finally getting the first overall pick, only for me to trade it. You know what? We got Berglund, a defensive defenseman, 79 overall. He's going to be a fantastic piece to this core so we've reached the re-sign phase and these are the two guys we got to bring back right here just kidding i'm not wasting any money on these guys we don't have any goaltenders to bring back let's just get into next season's free agency and make some moves actually what am i talking about there is one signing we need to make it's the rookie we drafted third overall this man definitely needs to be on our team i don't know what i was yapping about earlier so we're getting ready for next season but first we do have to give out a couple extensions here and we're going to be starting with lidstrom here we'll do 4.7 for the next six seasons he's a good young player he continues to develop we want to keep him around Rubrock's gonna be looking for a pretty penny himself, but I'm not willing to give him nine million dollars. But you know what? I think we can work with 8.5 for the next five seasons. For an 81 overall, this is definitely expensive, but we do have to remember he's 18 years old and he's gonna continue to develop. So in free agency, we're gonna be making a couple moves here, of course, and that's gonna start with Kevin Hayes. I think we'll do two years with Kevin Hayes, and we'll do 3.4 million or something like that. I feel like that's a good deal for him. He'll be great for the bottom six, and he provides a lot of defense. 
Another player we're going to be signing here is Barabanov, and this is going to be a fantastic deal for us. We're going to do 3.2 for the next three seasons. That's actually a pretty cheap contract for an 83 overall. And to finish it all off, we might as well bring in one more defenseman. We're going to do Ryan McDonough to a one-year deal at 2.8 million. Now our team actually looked pretty good here. Lindstrom, Ashram, and Owen Tippett on the first line. Barabanov, Stankoven, and Rubrock on the second. The bottom six here has definitely been improving. We got a lot of nice pieces. Now our defense is definitely a work in progress, but we have a lot of nice pieces that we can work around. Pyong and Berglund, you're going to be the two centerpieces for the next couple years. And when I say the next couple years, I mean the rest of this rebuild. Meanwhile, in between the pipes, of course, we have 85 overall Dustin Wolf. He's our guy. We're yet to pick up a backup though. It probably wouldn't hurt if we traded for one. I think that's what we're going to do right now. Let's go trade for a backup goaltender. And with a quick trade like this, we now have our backup goaltender. I guess not. It's going to take more than a fifth round pick. I'm a bit shocked at that. But don't worry because we have a lucrative seventh round pick we can work with i'll throw this in the deal and i can guarantee you after we make this deal tampa is going to be saying something like oh we're absolutely thrilled in accepting this deal it's a sweet proposal on our end you got a seventh round pick on top of a fifth i gave you like the 210th overall pick and now it's a steal of a deal for you guys what are you talking about so i don't recall how many years we're into this rebuild but we're definitely not that far in and here we are eighth in the entire league 38 26 and 4 at the trade deadline we actually might be making a move here we have a decent defense decent offense I mean, we're just decent all around. We're not great in anything, but we're not necessarily bad in anything. The forward core here is looking absolutely incredible, and it's going to be even better next season as the young guys continue to develop here, but I think we do have to make one move. One thing we definitely need to do is improve our right side defense, and Mackenzie Weaker could definitely be the guy for that. Now, we do have to remember he is 33 years old, and he's going to start declining pretty soon, but let's face it, we're going to be winning a Stanley Cup either next season or the season after. At 35 years old, he's still going to be a great defenseman, so I feel like this is a smart deal for us so i didn't even bother offering the first and second rounder because i know that's not going to be enough so i threw a prospect in this deal and i think this should be enough to get it done Maybe not. I guess we're going to have to add a bit more. Now, I don't want to give up the entire future when it comes to draft picks, but then again, Mackenzie Weger could be a very nice piece to our team here. What's going to take to get him, though? Okay, I did not realize Ty Smith has a lot of trade value for not playing on our team right now. So I'll throw him in this deal. That's still not enough to get it done. But yeah, shout out to Ty Smith for having as much trade value as he has. Because look how much trade value he has. Literally almost the exact same as Gavrikov and Mason Appleton. It's very interesting. All right, let's stop messing around here. We want to win a Stanley cup and if we're gonna win a stanley cup we have to make moves i'm throwing another second rounder in this deal and we're getting it done it's not a finesse if you win a stanley cup and that's what we plan on doing well not necessarily this season but maybe next year or the year after eventually we're gonna be hoisting that stanley cup so it turns out that last deal we make is actually not gonna be the last one as we're gonna be sending two prospects over to the national predators and we're gonna be picking up logan o'connor they're saying this is an absolute no-brainer for them the prospects i sent them aren't even that great after acquiring logan o'connor we're also gonna be giving him a three-year extension extension 1.1 million dollars is actually pretty good actually we're gonna do a bit less than 1.1 million but hey he's an 81 overall he can fill in the fourth line that's where we'll play him now the niagara ice dogs are looking absolutely incredible making the postseason here 12th in the entire league 46 32 and 4 considering where this team was last season i was definitely not expecting us to make the postseason as the team continues to develop we're gonna be seeing a lot of production from our top guys here ashram he's picking up 79 points owen tippett 69 lidstrom 66 neil pyong he's got 63 points as as these guys continue to develop well not Pyong, he's 31 years old but these three right here now our team's gonna be looking elite next season i also expect asham to have his superstar x factor but even if he doesn't that's fine he'll still pick up 90 points meanwhile in between the pipes dustin wolf proved he's the man for us 41 wins four shots a 9 10 a 292 not bad numbers for you and i can guarantee they're gonna be even better next season once we improve the team a bit more but who knows if we're gonna need another season because we're in the playoffs right now and niagara's looking to take on the buffalo sabers in the first round and they're looking to go on a bit of a run but we do have to remember this is niagara's first time in the postseason so i wouldn't be surprised if we go through a bit of adversity here in the first round all right this team is cooking right now we're three and one in the postseason we're looking to close out in game five here okay yeah we're blowing a 3-1 series lead we just lost game five eight to one this series is wrapped up for us we're off to game seven yeah, so that 8-1 loss was definitely a game changer for us. I wouldn't be surprised if we lost the series here. 6-2 in game 7. Blew a 3-1 series lead. Yeah, that's tough. That's real tough. Yeah, so not gonna lie, blowing a 3-1 series lead is definitely a tough way to go out. Columbus is gonna go on to win the Stanley Cup. They're sweeping the Anaheim Ducks, but I can guarantee Niagara's hoisting a Stanley Cup next season. Actually, I take that back because we still have to give the young guys a couple years to develop. So if we're not hoisting it next season, it's the season after. 
All I know is in the next two years, we're winning at least one Stanley Cup. That's a fact. So I'm not going to spend too much time here looking at our postseason numbers because we did blow a 3-1 series lead. So it doesn't really matter what we were putting up for numbers. So I guess there's one thing that's pretty notable in the draft lottery results. We're getting the 16th overall pick from the New York Islanders. So that first round pick we acquired from them actually is going to have a bit of value. So although we're not getting a steal with the 16th overall pick, we are going to be picking up a good prospect here. And with the 154th overall, we're securing a medium lead potential goaltender. On top of picking up that medium lead potential, potential prospect we're also gonna be securing a low lead potential prospect with the 187th overall so during the re-sign phase there wasn't really anyone we needed to bring back but now it's time to give us some extensions and we're gonna be starting with asham six years at 10 million dollars he's one of the best players on our team of course we got to keep him around on top of bringing back asham dustin wolf's also gonna be returning to the team and that's gonna be on a four-year deal at 4.8 million dollars worst part about dustin wolf is he dropped to medium starter potential but hey i still think we can work with them also hugo you did a great job as our backup so here's 1.1 million for the next two seasons i want to keep you around actually i take that back you didn't have good numbers by any means but hey you're an 82 overall goaltender i can't really complain so when it comes to free agency i have a plan and that's to fix our bottom six here because that definitely needs some help and we're going to start with william carrier 2.2 million for the next season now we do have a lot of extra money for this season so i'm perfectly fine with giving cam axton 3.4 million for one season but now it's time to improve the defense and we're going to be doing that through trades so when it comes to improving the defense we're going to be starting with ryan graves from the philadelphia flyers he's an 85 overall overall he'd be a great fit to the third pairing and that's where we're gonna hope he fits because if he can fit there then I think that might be a game changer for us so they're gonna be sending them over Gavrikov and one of our young players and hopefully that's enough to get this deal done not overly surprised they're saying no but you know what we gotta throw in the lucrative sixth round pick not the seventh but the sixth rounder and that's making the difference here maybe not now if I add a seventh rounder into this deal will that be the difference maker of course it will be now the last deal we're gonna be doing here is gonna be a bit of a risky one Henry Yoki Haru 81 overall he's a great defenseman for us but we're gonna hope he can fit on the third pairing we're literally picking him up strictly to play on the third pairing here so if he doesn't fit then this deal is pointless Luckily, we're not really going to have to give up too much in this deal. And we're adding Henry Okiharu. Now, I believe we're a good team, so I'm willing to give up our first round pick for this season. Actually, we'll do it for next season because I think next season has a bit more trade value. But can I do a first and second rounder over to the Pittsburgh Penguins and we pick up Jake Getzel here? They're going to be saying no, but when it comes to trade value, I think we're really close. Now, we do have to remember we did pick up a fourth rounder from the LA Kings. So is that enough to be the difference maker here? They're saying no, but we're definitely close. And Logan O'Connor, I also changed my mind on you. So I'm sending you over to the Pittsburgh Penguins in order to get this deal done. They're saying no, but we just have to sweeten the touch. So you already know what that means. The lucrative seventh round pick, but I don't think we actually have a seventh rounder anymore. So it's going to be a sixth round pick. There we go. We picked up Jake Getzel and I think we're ready to win a Stanley Cup. So this is what we're looking like right now. Lidstrom, Asham, and Jake Getzel on the first line. Then we're going to have Barabanov, Stankoven, and Rubrock on the second. The bottom six here is absolutely incredible. The lowest overall being Bass, who's an 80, but he's got low leap potential he's a nice young player and he fits in the third line so we might as well keep him around the one thing i am considering though is moving owen Tippett to the first line and then jake getzel to the second because jake getzel actually has a better line fit on the second than he does the first because on the first line he basically has virtually no line fit but you know what i think we're going to be rocking this right here i think this is the move now defensively i think we're in a really good spot here berglund continues to improve he's up to an 86 so we have an 86 overall berglund and 88 overall p young as our top pairing on the second pairing york and Uyghur can definitely hold it down then graves and yoki haru i can't complain about that and then in between the pipes of course we have dustin wolf he's still round 85 overall i'm expecting this team to finish in the top 10 maybe even the top five they showed a lot of potential last season and we're definitely in a better spot so we've made it to the trade deadline and we got to continue to trust the process here fourth in the entire league 42 20 and 3 i definitely can't complain with what this team's done so far our offense is amazing, 3.68 a game, while our defense is not too bad, only 3 goals allowed per game, I can definitely live with that. I would say there is one surprise though, and that's Pyong leading the way with 60 points this season, and it looks like moving Owen Tippett down to the third line definitely worked out for us, 53 points, but he's plus 27, who would have thought? Meanwhile, Jake Getzel only plus 2 while having 51 points, I'm expecting a bit better from you, I'm not gonna lie. But considering all of that right there, do we make a trade here? Like, we definitely could compete for a Stanley Cup, but there's nothing I really wanted to give up, we don't really have any draft picks left, so I don't think we're going to make any moves at the trade deadline here, and we're just going to simulate to the end of the season. Because what moves can we really do that's going to make us better, where I'm not having to give up draft?
draft picks three years down the line. Now, I certainly can't complain with what Niagara did this season. Fourth in the entire league, 52, 27, and three. A great offense, a fantastic defense, but there actually is one thing I can't complain about. We ended up finishing third in our division, although we were fourth in the entire league. So that means we have to match up against the Buffalo Sabres in the first round once again. No way we were a 52 win team. And then in the first round, we have to play another 52 win team. That's just a tough look for us. When it comes to how our team performed, I definitely can't complain. Ashram's picking up 81 points. Jake Getzel, great year from him. He's got 73. Pyong's got 70. Rubok's picking up 68. If this team doesn't win a Stanley Cup this season, we're for sure winning a Stanley Cup next season. Because guys like Rubrock, Ashram, Lindstrom, Stankoven, they continue to get even better. Meanwhile, when it comes to goaltending numbers, Dustin Wolf, I'm actually a bit disappointed in your numbers. 36 wins, two shouts, a 908, and a goals against of exactly three. Without Hugo here, we're not making the playoffs but we're not going to worry about that now because the regular season and playoffs are two completely different things but the one thing that's not changing our first round matchup that's the buffalo sabers once again okay i'm not gonna lie that's tough that is real tough right there we're getting swept in the first round don't really know how to process that all right it's time for stick on the ice to make a statement none of these have ever backfired whatsoever we're winning a stanley cup next season i'm guaranteeing it right now Dustin Wolf, I'm going to be honest, I actually don't think he can be our Stanley Cup winning goaltender, so we're going to be trading for a goalie. I think it just has to happen. I mean, to be completely fair, it's not necessarily only Dustin Wolf's fault because nobody on this team scored goals during the postseason, but Wolf, what were your numbers? Okay, yeah, you're getting shipped out. You're not the man for us. So we might not have been able to get a great prospect with the 26th overall pick, but with the 92nd, we are going to be securing a mediumly potential center here, and he's going to be used in a trade in a couple minutes here. On top of picking up a mediumly potential forward, we're also going to be securing a mediumly potential goaltender. So if we're going to win a Stanley Cup, we have to do it this season. Berglund, he wants an extension here, $10 million. Barbanov, he wants an extension, 5.8. I mean, that's not the end of the world. But Pyong, he wants one as well, $10 million. We're not going to have enough money to bring everyone back, so we have to win this season but in saying that we might as well work on a couple of extensions here and we'll start with Berglund we'll do 9.1 for the next four seasons you're an 88 overall you're only 20 years old you got to be a part of this team for the future now I really want to bring Peon back but he is 32 years old Graves is 33 we have a lot of older guys here that I don't necessarily want to bring back Peon I'm on the fence about you because you've been absolutely dominating for our team but I'm just not sure you know what I changed my mind with Peon on a three-year deal at 9.5 million he continues to produce we better keep him around so I think this might be be the move for us and our goaltender for the future is going to be Spencer Knight. He's 27 years old, has four years left on his contract. He's already an 88 overall with a ton of X factors. I think this is the missing piece for our team. And I think that missing piece is going to be acquired after throwing a third round pick into this deal and we're getting it done. Never mind, it's going to take a bit more than a third. It's going to take a third rounder and of course a lucrative sixth round pick. We got the deal done. I feel like we're really close in value even though they're saying we're far off. Here's the seventh rounder. Is that the difference maker? Of course it is. So we do have a bit of money we can work with here in free agency, but I'm not willing to do anything more than a one-year deal. So we're going to start with Sean Lawton, one year at $4 million. Why'd I call him Sean Lawton? It's Scott Lawton. Scott Lawton, one year, $4 million. On top of bringing in Scott Lawton, we're also going to be bringing in Novak. We'll do one year at $3.8 million. And to finish it all off, we'll do Yes, We're Fast to a one-year deal at $3.1 million. We're going all in this season. It might be the last dance for this team. I mean, it's definitely not the last dance. We have an incredibly young core here. But if we really want to win a Stanley Cup, we better do it now because we're going to be losing some pieces pretty quick here. So enough messing around here. Let's go win ourselves a Stanley Cup. Lidstrom, Getzel, Ashram on the first line. It looks incredible. Rubrock, Stankoven, and Barabanov on the second. That's great as well. The bottom six here, incredible. The lowest overall, of course, once again being Bass. But as we know, he has a great line fit here. We want to keep him around. And as an 81 overall, he actually puts up some pretty solid numbers. 38 points last season, 17 goals he was plus 21 let's keep this line together because they're looking fantastic defensively it looks like Mackenzie Weaker is starting to decline but we kind of expected that to happen he's still an 85 overall though while the rest of the defense it looks not too bad I mean Pyong and Berglund these are two elite players for us we're definitely going to be hoisting a Stanley Cup this season, especially with this man in between the pipes right here, Spencer Knight, 88 overall. This is going to be the difference for us. We're going to be a 60-win team, and on top of that, we're also not going to get swept in the first round. We're going to do the sweeping. So this team was looking so good. I just simmed right through the trade deadline because I didn't want to make any changes here. We're third in the entire league, 52, 21, and 9. We have a fantastic offense, 3.8 goals per game, while the defense, absolutely incredible, 2.88. I think that's second in the entire league. Never mind, it's third all i know is we're one of the best defenses in the entire league 
And on top of being great offensively, our defense is fantastic too. Ashram's picking up 92 points. Rubrox got 87. Lindstrom 81. Pionk 73. Good thing we kept this man around. Nah, our team's rolling right now. And on top of that, we have a superstar goaltender in Spencer Knight. 41 wins this season, four shouts, and 916 to 264. Those are way better numbers than what Dustin Wolf was putting up for us. Speaking of Dustin Wolf, I'm actually curious to see what he did this season. So we're going to take a quick look at his numbers. It looks like he got things straightened out here at 917 to 270. I think this trade worked out for both teams. But I don't really care what Dustin Wolf does in the postseason because we've moved on from him. And now we got Spencer Knight. He's our guy. And I'm looking forward to Spencer Knight cooking the New Jersey Devils because that's who we got in the first round. So not only did Spencer Knight absolutely cook for us, but the entire offense was flying. We're picking up goal after goal in this series. And it looks like we're going to be sweeping the New Jersey Devils. So after that absolute dominance in the first round, we're moving on to the second. And it looks like we're going to be taking on the Tampa Bay Lightning. And honestly, I'm a bit upset about that. I would have loved to take on Dustin Wolf in the second round, but unfortunately that matchup's not going to be happening, so I guess we'll have to settle for this one. After dropping the first two games of the series, we're bouncing back big time with wins in game three and game four. So game five, can we continue that? Hopefully we can. I don't know why it didn't let me simulate there, but there we are. We're simulating game five and we're going to be dropping that one. Maybe we can make a comeback here in game six and force a game seven. It looks like that's exactly what's happening. So here we go with the biggest postseason game in Niagara Ice Dogs history. We're going to simulate the entire game right now. And it looks like we're going to be taking this one. Two late goals in the third period are going to be the difference maker. And we're off to the conference finals. Show to Novak and Rubrock because they really held it down those final minutes. So here we go, the conference finals. We're four games away from making it to the Stanley Cup final. Let's just take one game at a time here. Yeah, we're not doing that. Let's sweep the New York Islanders here and then sweep the Vancouver Canucks or Colorado Avalanche and then take home the Stanley Cup in the next eight games. No messing around. In classic Niagara Ice Dogs fashion, when things are looking good, this team's gonna choke and now we're down 3-1 in the series. Are we gonna be able to spark a comeback here? It's gonna have to start in game five and we're gonna be taking that one. So game six is a massive one. Can we get back into this series? Maybe we're able to. We were down 3-1. Now it's tied 3-3. Let's complete the comeback. So can the Ice Dogs pull off the massive upset here and complete the 3-1 series comeback? It looks like they're going to be able to. Berglund's going to be picking up a goal with 15 seconds left, but they're not going to need that one. And we're off to the Stanley Cup final with the help of three unanswered, of course. So here we go. The Stanley Cup final. The Niagara Ice Dogs taking on the Colorado Avalanche. It's only been five years since I started rebuilding this team. And somehow we've already made it to the Stanley Cup final. That definitely happened a lot. Lot quicker than I thought but you know what since we're here we might as well take it home and in surprising fashion we're down 3-1 this series who would have saw that one coming honestly at this point I'm convinced that this team's just never gonna win but hold on are we gonna complete another 3-1 series comeback here Ain't no way we come back 3-1 in the conference finals and in the Stanley Cup final to win it. So I don't know what it's going to take to win the Stanley Cup here, but we're just going to be simming the entire game here. Game 7 for the Stanley Cup. Who's going to be coming out on top in this one? Henry Yoki Haru is picking up the OT winner. Out of all the players on this team, of all the elite players I have picked up, Henry Yoki Haru, Game 7, Stanley Cup final, he's potting the winner. Ain't no way that just happened. Back-to-back 3-1 -back series comebacks, and Henry Yoki Haru is our Stanley Cup winner. Was that goal by Henry Yoki Haru the only goal he scored in the postseason? This man had two goals. He scored two goals in the entire postseason, and one of those goals won us the Stanley Cup after coming back 3-1 in the series in Game 7 in overtime to cap it all off. This man is built different. On top of all that, we definitely wouldn't have been able to win the Stanley Cup without this man right here, Spencer Knight. 15 wins, one shot, a 920, and a 262. Those were the Stanley Cup numbers we've been looking for. So I've won a Stanley Cup with the worst WA OHL team and I've won a Stanley Cup with the worst OHL team. Now all I have to do is win a Stanley Cup with the worst Quebec Major Junior Hockey League team. 